died to save men The plan of salvation assures us He's coming back again Are you ready for Jesus to come? Are you faithful in all that you do? Have you fought the good fight? Have you stood for the right? Have others seen Jesus in you? Are you ready to stand in your place? Are you ready to look? Can you look up and say, this is my Lord? Are you ready for Jesus to come? Don't cling this world and its treasure this earth it will soon pass away oh give him your love without a measure he's calling you today to come Are you faithful in all that you do Do you fight the good fight Do you stand for the right Do others see Jesus Are you ready to stand in your place? Are you ready to look in His face? Can you look up and say, This is my On a clear day, we can see forever. This is Clear Word Wednesday. A few moments in God's Word, designed to help you to see God's eternal purpose. Join us as we see clearly into God's Word.
Hello and welcome to Clear Word Wednesday. This is your host, the Word Master. On today's presentation, we'll be answering a question pertaining to God's call on our life. And we'll be hearing a presentation entitled, Forsaken All for Jesus. But before we can get into any of it, please join me as we have a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray that as we come together to hear from you this day, that your Holy Spirit will indict the words that are being presented to our hearts. Lord, please be with the music. Please be with the messages. Father, bless every word that comes to your people this day, O oh Lord. May it encourage, enlighten, uplift us, Father. May your words just supercharge our lives and give us encouragement to go and take on this day and indeed the rest of the days of our lives. So bless your words, Lord Jesus. Bless your people as we gather to hear from you, we pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. So as you know, on this program, what we like to do is take one of your questions and answer it from the clear word of God. This morning, our question pertains to God's call on our life, and it is this. My question is, how would you know the calling that God has on your life? How would you know the calling that God has on your life? Well, to begin with, let's answer the fact that, as the Bible says, that all of us generally are called to be saved. Isaiah 45 and verse 22 reads, Look unto me, and be ye saved, all the ends of the earth, for I am God, and there is none else. So, in a general sense, all of us have been called to the gospel. All of us have been called to enter into this experience of being saved. Or rather to accept the salvation that has been worked out for us in Jesus Christ on Calvary's cross. And then, once we come to Jesus, we are called to go out. See, beloved, Jesus saves us to serve. We are saved to serve. Never forget that. And each and every one of us, in our several abilities and our several capacities, are called to be disciples of Jesus. He says just as much in Matthew 28, verse 19. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Matthew 28, 19 and 20. So, we are called to receive the salvation that Jesus has already worked out for us. And then, once we receive that call, have been born again, been cleansed by His blood, and washed in the water of regeneration, the first thought that comes to our mind is those that we've left behind in a dark world and our heart yearns and burns for them and the commission comes home to us go and bring them remember early on in the gospel as Jesus was calling his disciples notice he said to some follow me and they themselves said to others their brothers their friends whomever we have seen the Messiah it's not just the Messiah come and see and they come that's the heart of the gospel beloved Jesus calls you, and then he puts it within your heart to call others. It's his call, because as the Bible says, no one can come unto me except the Father draws them. And I want you to notice this as you get ready to answer the question in earnest. Again, the question is, how can I know the calling on my life? Again, let us be clear. There's a general call, and to this questioner's question, 
The Bible says, Him that comes to me I will in no wise cast out. So the issue, of course, is not whether or not God wants us. The issue is whether or not we will receive Him. And then when we come to Him, the Bible says that He has work for us to do in His vineyard. But now, the specifics. In Acts 13 and verse 2, we read these words. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. I want you to understand something, beloved, from the Word of God. This all-wise, all-knowing, omniscient God, when he called Paul, to the gospel ministry. It was not just an ordinary calling, beloved. Like I said, all of us have been called to go and preach the gospel into all the world. And like I said to the questioner in person, Paul was uniquely qualified to do the work that he was called to do. And I said, the qualification didn't come from birth. It did not come from worth. It came from the fact that who God calls, he equips. Who God bids, he enables. God never, ever calls the qualified. He qualifies the called. Because you see, we may come into this experience with our own baggage, our ideas, and our thoughts. And that's why Paul had to relearn and be retaught of all that he knew coming in to the gospel. And so after these years of active ministry, of laboring on behalf of his own countrymen, the Bible says that now Paul was given a special unction to take the gospel message to the Gentiles. And whereas Peter, James, and John and the rest of the disciples had a work to do among the Jews. The Bible says, God sent Paul for hence to the Gentiles. You remember one time he had a dream and he heard the Macedonian saying, come over and help us. We call that today the Macedonian call. When you feel that special unction from God to go into foreign missionary work. And so yes, there is a special, special call, unique from the general call to salvation. Notice again the experience of young Samuel. In 1 Samuel chapter 3, beginning at verse 4, we read these words. Then the Lord called Samuel and he said, Here I am. Then the Lord called Samuel, and he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli, and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call, lie down again. So he went and lay down, and the Lord God, and the Lord called again Samuel, and Samuel arose and went to Eli, and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call you, my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time, and he arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you call me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the young man. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant hears. So Samuel went and lay down in his place, and the Lord came and stood calling at other, t as, at other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant hears. You see, beloved, Samuel, as young as he was, was in tune to the voice of God. And that's what we need to do. We need to be listening and staying in tune to the voice of God. If you know the story of Samuel, his mother Hannah could not have any children, and Samuel was a miracle child. Samuel, she said, If you give him to me, I will give him back to you. And surely enough, he did. And at this time, Samuel was serving as a priest in the house 
of God in the temple that they had at the time, the removable tabernacle. So Samuel had received that general call, and now here, in the midnight hour, Samuel was being given that call of separation to do the work that God had called him to do. Notice how the Bible said that Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the young man. Bible says at that time, even though Eli, even though Samuel, excuse me, even though Samuel was in tune, having not yet heard that audible voice, he thought it was Samuel, he thought it was Eli. But thank God, even at that point, Eli still knew and understood that God was no respecter of person, and here he was about to call into his service a mere child. Beloved, the real question is not how can I know, because God does have a call for everyone that he separates to the work. God does have a special area of interest that every one of us who have been called into the gospel ministry are to take upon ourselves. So the question is, how can I know where God is leading me? How can I know what God has for me? And the answer is simple. Do what Samuel did. Still be in tune to the voice of God. Because even though, and this is the key, even though Samuel at that young age had no clue who was calling him, he knew he was being called. His ears were open. And understand, beloved, understand that that is where you and I need to be. Listening and hearing what God has to say to us. And understand, because some people don't understand this. Even the questioner, they ask me, how can I access the gift of this or the gift of that? Now, my reply was, and my reply to you is, you don't. A gift is a gift. It's not like it's a reward where you're given something for service. The Bible says that God gives to every person their gifts as he sees fit. And so your call may not be to be on the internet and over the airwaves preaching to the masses. Your call may be to be writing books and tracts and pamphlets and magazines. Your call may be to be behind the scenes of that radio station of the internet. Your call may be to be in the publishing ministry and publishing those books and tracts that are written. Your call may be to go to the foreign fields and different areas of the world where the need is great. And because you have been listening to the voice of God, God knows exactly where he can use you, where he can put you, where you can be most effective. See, the goal, after all, is to win the hearts and minds of his children around this world. And he knows that some will be attracted by one means or the other. And you whom he sends, like a young Samuel, innocent, and knowing full well that on one side some will reject, but on the other side, God is calling children now. Let me listen. Don't harden your heart, beloved. That's the best thing I could tell you from God's word. When he's calling, like Samuel, just say, Here I am, Lord. Your servant hears. And you know what? That's the key to it all. Understanding that God is calling and we just need to surrender.
our next segment will be a very special presentation from Minister Carissa Joseph of Walls of Salvation and Gates of Praise Devotions Ministry. For more information on that ministry, you can find you can find it on Facebook. Find a page on Facebook, Walls of Salvation and Gates of Praise Devotion Ministry. And at this time, Minister Carissa, forsaken all for Jesus. Keeping you long. 
if God gave us the parents, and God gave us the children, now God is the creator of all the creation. So the creator is way, way more higher and more important than the creation. Forsake all for the kingdom and the glory of God. Be a full-time, sold-out Christian. Forsake all for the kingdom and the glory of God. Let your light shine so bright that whosoever comes across your path, they will be consumed with the power, presence, and the love of Almighty God that will illuminate from your life. God dealt with me about his people. His people who are called by his name, who accepted Jesus Christ, who are born again. His people. He said my people need to learn to live a forsaken all life for my kingdom. Because his salvation is near. And he wants people to be ready. You see, it's, you, you see, it's going to be too late to get ready when he comes. You got to be ready now. Remember the, the five wise virgins and the five foolish virgins? How the five wise, they took oil and had enough oil. And then the five foolish, they didn't have no oil and didn't take enough oil. So then they had to go run and get some oil from the store. And by the time the bridegroom came, they were left out. That is, that means be ready. That means be ready, get ready, stay ready. So you want to be ready when he comes. Because our salvation is nearer now than we first believed. God says all of me for all of you. Nothing else less will ever do. God say, you have me, your love. I'm your love. I laid down my life for you. If I laid down my life for you, then you should at least love me. Just like I love you more than I love my own life, then you need to love me just as I love you. No greater love than this, than a man lay down his life for a friend. That's John 15, 13. You must, I must, we must be willing to lay down our life for the kingdom of Almighty God. Because when we come to Jesus Christ, we have no other life except the life of Christ. For me to live is Christ. For me to die is gain. God said, I'm letting all of you know at this time that you must forsake all for my kingdom, for my glory. Nothing less will do. God says time is running out. You must choose to serve, love, and obey me. God says, I'm not going to give you all of me if you're not going to give me all of you. Now, let me just put a pause right there. You know, you ain't got to do nothing. God already done died on the cross for our sins. For salvation. For salvation. God has did it for us. But what God is saying is that the deep things, the precious secrets of my knowledge, of my wisdom, of my understanding, of my insight, and my revelations of myself, do you think I'm going to give it to you? If you're not giving me all of you, I'm not going to give you all of me. Why? Because God knows, because God knows if you love him half-hearted, then guess what? You will do a half-hearted job for him. And God said, do you know who I am? God said, do you know who I am? I am the great king. I am the holy of holies. I am he that sits upon the soil of the earth. God says, I am the one who stretches the heavens as a first. For say all, all of me for all of you. Nothing left will ever do. God says, I want to give you all of me for all of you. God says that, how, how you want me to give you all of me? And you want to talk, talk to me once a month. And it doesn't even make a difference because I still wake you up every morning. I still give you health in your body. I still give you a job. I still pay your bills. I still do so much fun. But I can even give you more than that. But I'm not going to do it because you're not giving me all of you. God said that don't even work in a natural relationship. So why do you think that it's going to work in this great spiritual relationship with me, the great I am? Oh, no. God said, you want a full-time Mac Daddy. It ain't going to work. God said, all of me for all of you. God said, you must forsake all, or you are not even qualified for this position of being my disciple.
today by the message and the question and answer session. Join us next time as we look at more out of God's clear word. Let us pray. Father, thank you so much for what our eyes have seen and our ears have heard this day. Thank you for opening up to us, dear Lord, the vast expense of your word. Lord, I indeed pray that your people may learn to surrender all to you, Lord, and to want nothing but you. Help us to realize that as we get ready for eternity, that all the things of time must vanish away. Help us to lift you up, Jesus, and you alone. And help us to turn our eyes fully on you, so that the things of this world may grow strange to them in the light of your glory and grace. Bless your people who are listening. Continue to give them strength, dear God, to forsake all for Jesus, I pray, in your holy name. Amen. You have been listening to Clear Word Wednesday. Join us again next time for more insight on God's clear word.